ông quay cho ông chung đẹp cảm tỏ cái tâm can để thi tâm ca hát tỏ tâm lý bắt đầu bên cái chung từ thật hạp nhà rộng ông trả chết nằm mây bắn tỏ ca tăng xâm luôn đến đầu cho buồn hạ dùng Xin mời quân lục bất thiến. Lục xa xa chả nhưng còn tài trong ngọn nhà xoay anh dù bẹp con từ nâng cả nghìa mùi chùm nuôn đại lục bàn với cả nghìa sắc xa xa chư bẹp con từ nâng bơ bà lạy bụi xa chì bế xếp bẹp con từ nâng ca xâm lạp trung trí thôm và đôi chì ca xâm lạp chân chết Sing, sing, from sing, sing. Hi, God. Hi, look about Nippon. Sip her head way, banchi, case, some lap, manu. Hi, ta, look me in Nippon. Sip her, sing, sing, tete. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. The prosecutor, look, my first single authored book is Why Did They Kill? I have a second single authored book called Man Monster that's coming out in October. Hi, look, my first single authored book is Why Did They Kill? I have a second single authored book called Man Monster that's coming out in October. And what is the subject matter of that? Briefly, I'm going to talk about that. 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 Thank you, Mr. Deputy Co-Prosecutor. The focus of that book is the trial. It's the same place. I don't know if you want me to elaborate. I don't think that's necessary. When you read me this, I think there's no need to say thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. It's very quiet. It's very quiet. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. Sếp hơi đại lục bàn bạc phùm có đôi chì xâm ruồn nữa. Tại tao lục bàn cho ruồn thuê cái ca bẹp bọn chú môi nâng ca nghìn bọn sếp hơi nì bàn 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 hơi, bàn 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 hơi. Thank you. Perhaps seven or eight, I'd have to count them up. Mình trả đá một tổ bình ní. And have those books primarily been dealing with the topic of mass violence and suicide? Yes, with the exception of one entitled Biocultural Approaches to the Emotions. And I also note from your curriculum vitae that you mentioned at least 58 articles in the area of the genocide and violence. สมัยกัมพูชีประชาธิปไตยนี้ตามเอ็นเต้ในจุดนี้ ជាសិនខ្ញុំសម័យកម្ពុជាជាធិបតេយ្យនៅក្នុងការជាច្រើនហើយតាមរយៈសីវីរបស់លោកក៏ដូចជាអ្វីដែលគាត់អ្វីដ
ពីការបញ្ជាក់តាតាគេទទួលស្គាល់នឹងផ្ដល់នៅអភិរង្វាន់យ៉ាងដូចម្ដេចដែលពាក់ព័ន្ធទៅនឹងវិធានបត្តិ
ដែលលោកបានដែលមាននៅក្នុងឆ្នាំ Thank you. To, to be brief, Thank you. ជាស្ថានស្លឹករតនោះ ហើយអ្វីដែលខ្ញុំបានសិក្សាស្រាវជ្រាវក៏លងមកនៅស្រាប់ទីទួលស្លែងដែលយើងពិនិត្យទៅលើចម្លោះសារភាពសម័យបុ
ເຈົ້າເປັນປະຊາຊົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫຼາຍຄົນຫ
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I refer to our earlier uh, discussion in court. Um, uh, slowly but steadily, we are slipping into uh, the, I believe that there are characters with the word genocide, genocide um, and the regime. I understand the ruling uh, that we really refer to uh, the book that sometimes the word is not avoided. This is what the scholar has called the writing. However, uh, now um, we're entering into an area where not only it's very confusing for, uh, for instance, my client downstairs is quite upset with the things that he heard uh, from his holding cell. As a matter of fact, he wanted to come up, um, but he will come up to the stage. Um, but it's also very confusing for the public. Um, so I, I really believe that we should be very restrictive when it comes to the use of the word. And I believe the expert is very well capable of only using the word uh, when it is really unavoidable and in an appropriate. But now, sort of carelessly moving to the word genocide regime and genocide, I find that the way outside of the scope of this. Uh, Your Honours, um, I take, take counsel's point. Uh, I think this is part of the difficulty, of course, is that uh, this expert is written in this book with a certain use of that, of that term genocide, but by the same token, I think the expert has uh, said that he's prepared to try and uh, neutralise the term, that genocide term, um, and have sort of more of a, a factual basis to it. So perhaps if um, we can try and do this um, Mr. Expert, if you can try and um, not use the word genocide unless absolutely necessary, and perhaps we can talk about uh, mass violence or systematic killings aimed at particular groups as best we can. Can we agree to try and do that? Um, Mr. Expert, I think that this is a Yes, um, I should note that it is somewhat difficult if I'm referring to a process of genocidal priming not to use the word that's based on comparative observations about genocide, not to use the word genocide, the uh, process of elucidating this dynamic. It's, it's very difficult um, and it's somewhat odd. I will do my, my best, but it's a model that talks about how genocide unfolds. So, my inability to use that is in a way I'm doing self-censorship, but I'll, I'll, do my, I'll do my best. And, and I, think, I think the concern is that uh, in terms of 
Cambodia, what happened during the DK period, democratic Cambodia period, um, that, uh, that not be used specifically by you, but I think it's fair in a comparative sense um, that, uh, if your studies have been in relation to places where um, you believe um, uh, genocide has occurred. Uh, um, uh, look, uh, that's probably been reasonable uh, in this courtroom, but certainly in relation to uh, the issues relating to democratic Cambodia, we would like you to use, uh, avoid using that particular term. Um, as, as, as much as possible. Professor, just to, to refocus again, um, I'd like to take you to your book. And this is at E3 slash 3346. It's page 281 of your book. Um, the other copy has the highlighted version there as well, if you, if you uh, care to use that. But at page 281, which is English ERN 0041723, by and large, there's no, unfortunately, Khmer French a translation of this book. Um, you state that, and you, you just started to explain a number of common factors that uh, appear to be present in, in countries where other against a number of groups. Uh, and and if I can quote you, you, just to give this conversation or this, this question some structure, you state that while each genocide has a distinct etiology that resists reduction into a uniform pattern, many are broadly categorized by a set of crimes and make the social context in question increasingly hot, including socio-economic upheaval, deep structural divisions, an identifiable target group, structural change, effective ideological manipulation, a breakdown in moral restraints, discriminatory political changes, and an apathetic response from the international community. As these and other facilitating processes unfold, genocide becomes increasingly possible. Now again, that's a quote from the I'm asking you to uh, apply that to the situation in Cambodia now. But is that, is that the your thesis that these factors often appear in other countries where there is systematic killings of the groups within those countries. Yes, it is. And is it your opinion that those factors uh, were present in the democratic Cambodia period to, uh, contribute, or they contributed to the treatment of different groups were killed during the present. Uh, yes, all of them. Thank you. I would now like to, we'll come back to those factors and, and I'll be asking you some questions about your um, support that in fact those factors were present to assist in the contribution of the, of the killings in democratic Cambodia. But you also state in your book that I would like to take you to, to your book again. You state that 
these factors are not enough to activate mass killings in any particular country, but they must um, to cultural customs and norms in order for any particular person to carry out those mass killings. Uh, yes, that's correct. What I refer to as ideological localization and pain. And in relation to uh, Cambodia, uh, in the democratic Cambodia period, what types of localization or what types of other factors that existed in Cambodia um, uh, in contributing to those mass killings. If you can just give a very brief, brief summary. Yeah, thank you. So a a brief example would be uh, existing structural divisions, for example, between uh, the rural population and the city population, or people are aware of class differences. Uh, to take up local idioms um, of big people, little people, drawing on these different categories and recast it uh, in a Marxist-Leninist framework uh, to talk about, for example, the class grudge, uh, to talk about class oppression. So, in this context, the uh, Khmer Rouge leaders uh, took Marxist-Leninist ideology as well as a smattering of other ideological influences uh, and would think, how do we motivate people who aren't familiar with these terms? And so, as always, the idea was to couch it in local terms. Uh, and all regimes, uh, you know, that use ideology to help promote uh, genocide, speaking in general, uh, undertake this process. Otherwise, people won't be motivated to follow them. And in your book, you state that um, there were some cultural norms that existed in democratic Cambodia and before in relation to uh, the issue of disproportionate revenge, um, power, and suspicion, and faith and honor, and those cultural practices um, assisted contributed to um, the killings that occurred in democratic Cambodia. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Um, I just should offer one point of clarification uh, that to avoid a reductionist explanation, my argument is not that culture caused the violence, but that all violence, because we're human beings that have internalized cultural norms, it always unfolds in a cultural patterning. But again, to motivate people, it's in the interest of an ideologue to draw upon local understandings uh, to have what I call ontological resonance, to make it meaningful to people and to get people to follow them. And so perhaps if we can have a slightly closer look and some of the common factors um, you say contributed to the mass killing in Cambodia. You referred to um, social and economic upheaval and the fact that at those times um, people are attracted to a certain ideologies um, to assist in um, moving away from that upheaval. Is that correct? Um, if I understand correctly, so again, uh, in a context of upheaval, when structures of meaning, those ways of life, our everyday practices that give meaning to us are torn apart, uh, people have a sort of existential angst. They reach out and search for other forms of meaning, and when people offer a blueprint, a vision of a better world, uh, they often will gravitate to it. And when you say uh, a blueprint of a better world, uh, you refer to um, this attraction being greater when um, there's high modernist government programs or, or highly 
กรรมวิธีแต่เมียนเพียบสมุทรมาญถ้าถ้ากรรมวิธีแบบนั้นได้เป็นการโอเตียนเตียนเตียนปริจิตรนกนกปฏิมุยนกเป็นนักเด็กจูรูมตัวดอลจะมาจะลุกหลุดหลานนี้ This is an issue I take up in my more recent book a little bit, but it's in, you know, it's in this book as well quite a bit. Um, but in terms of, in general, in the world in which we live, you often have people who are doing macro-level planning. They get a blueprint, a design to try and improve something. Uh, a problem that often emerges, and James Scott in the book has looked at this in detail, is that the local conditions on the ground mesh up with the vision. So if you look, going back to the national emblem uh, of Democratic Campuchia, it has a grid of paddy fields. Everything's laid out as if it looks perfect. And in many ways, that's the vision, the sort of vision that moving towards industry or prosperous future. But if you actually go and look at photographs of uh, what life was like during democratic Campuchia on the ground or listen to different accounts, it was dramatically different. So the weakness of the vision that appeals to people is that the implementation is often, uh, often goes off and quite often goes very, very badly. Uh, and then you begin to have problems such as during DK, uh, where you have problems with agriculture, um, you know, there's a the famous uh, trip of Ing Charit uh, to the northwest, uh, saying the conditions are bad. Uh, in such situations, uh, you know, what do you do? Do you take a look at your own blueprint, your own vision, or do you try and adapt? And that's always a question that emerges in the context of democratic Kampuchea. It seems that there is an attempt to stick with the, uh, with the blueprint. With the line, so to speak. Um, yes, Mr. President, an observation is uh, in relation to the last answer given by the expert. Um, we have now moved into an area which is. Uh, a concrete event that happened in uh, the Democratic Campuchia, the visit of Ing Charit to the Northwest Zone, in which he observed all kinds of things. We know that in the book, uh, the expert, Mr. Hinton, has given his interpretation for that event, uh, his interpretation of what happened subsequently. Uh, we in the defense completely disagree with that view, but that's, of course, not relevant now. But what is relevant is um, the extent of the impact of the event on the ground, the extent to which the expert who is an anthropologist can make in this courtroom, I'm not telling, I'm not talking about this book, but in this courtroom, all kinds of far-reaching conclusions as to um, um, yeah, political yeah, implications yeah. at the time of certain events. No. Um, I'm very happy if uh, the anthropologist, the expert, talks about what he has observed while uh, being um, in Banjan or whatever it's called. I'm very happy to hear what the expert has to say about his conversations also with former uh, Mayor But the moment the expert enters into um, political or rather interpretation of real events, uh, in this particular case 1976, I think uh, he's going beyond his expertise and he should not be his, uh, opinion on this. Uh, so uh, I'm sure this is the first um, situation that we have this problem, uh, and I believe um, the expert should confine himself to what he can say from an anthropological standpoint, but not whether he can read at the time he was making uh, things up or whether she was uh, uh, trying to cover up mistakes from the agricultural policy and blame it all on the Northwest Zone Congress, that's what the expert said. So I think you uh, should be very careful as to what the limits of uh, the expert's expertise are. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Your Honours, um, 
สปริญญารงค์ผมคิดว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขาเรียกว่าผู้แทนที่เขา I will try and keep the questions and answers short and try and focus on um, the main aspects of his expertise in relation to um, why groups were treated in the way they did, what factors caused them, and opportunity to continue to focus. So perhaps if we can um, just Talking slightly more um, general terms, the blueprint. You, you said that at, in times of social upheaval, um, blueprints, more more simple ideological blueprints that are less complex, become more attractive to people caught in that situation. In democratic Cambodia. Was the Communist Party of Cambodia putting forward an ideological, high modernist, simplistic blueprint that you believed was attractive to many young Cambodians? He is an anthropologist, he is not a political scientist, he is not an historian. As far as I know, he has not spoken to any senior cadre. His expertise should be limited to what his academic background is. He really should not be thinking about um, structural aspects like uh, ideology, LGBT, uh, all those uh, politically relevant factors. Um, I don't have an objection if it's sort of sometimes in the terms, but at the moment um, the prosecution is asking about uh, structural decay, ideology of the CPK. I think he's overstepping uh, the, bounds of, the boundaries of his expertise and knowledge. Mr. President, um, Mr. Hinton is a, uh, an expert on mass violence. Um, against particular against groups in different countries, he's a genocide expert. We're not talking about genocide. His conclusion about genocide in Cambodia. He's an expert. When you heard him provide his qualifications earlier, he said that genocidal studies or, or, or studies in relation to political violence against particular groups in society has become a field of its own. Where um, it's become interdisciplinary, where they take into account all fields of study, anthropology, political science, um, history, and that is the expertise of what we see in the experts' book. You can see he discusses at length about why. Um, Young Cambodians, poor Cambodians, were attracted to the ideology of marriage. He's an expert on human behaviour. He studied propaganda um, in different genocides around the world or mass killings around the world. He's the very person that should be able to uh, respond to these questions and to certainly. Dissect um, answers into fields of uh, discipline is becoming highly artificial, and it, it won't be beneficial at all to this court. So I, I would ask, like, can you? Um, I haven't asked him questions about the structure of the Khmer Rouge. I've asked him about the ideology of the blueprint. So um, if, um, perhaps if I can. can oh, Madan, Madan.
บ่าอ้อยแม่เราไปกาจุนตื่อสกรอมสองสกรอมคลอดิเฟนดำไปสมรัจเลยสไลจุมตัวระบอกสหมิตรวีกาปิคดายอันตรายชีวิตนุ่นชีวิตได้บันจุมตัวตอนนั้นการตั้งตำนวนให้จงกร้อยให้ดำไปเบาใจนึงแบบเรือบันชะบัดล้อให้เชี่ยวเวียงยีกาจุมตัวเติมหนึ่งจะเติมจะคลายจะเจียกรมค้านดอลพิกิมาค้างเตี้ยนองการปราบปราบปีบเลียบักลุ่นองการตั้งสมมติในดอลจะปุ๊บเนี่ยจุ่มเรียนอยู่ตรงนี้สมเชยลูกใส่จะกรองโปรดิเฟนที่ objection is overruled we note that this is an area where different fields overlap you have a crossover here we don't think that can be avoided completely So the question is allowed, and generally we are professional judges, and we will be able in the end to assess where we think that the expertise of this expert assists us because it's in his field, and where we think it might be outside his field of expertise. But generally, having said that, Mr. Expert, and this is, I think, also for the sake of the interpreters. Perhaps avoid words in German or Latin where you can. Some local people want to know about the language. And not only for the interpreters, but also for us. Short sentences, very much encouraged. As little excursions into perhaps. Private experiences where they are not necessarily extremely important for the argument you are making. I think it helps all of us to concentrate on the issue at hand and also makes interpretation much much easier. Thank you. 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 Common factors that you state. To a situation where it's more likely that the expert will be able to assess the expert's expertise. Yes, we have a situation where it's more likely that the expert will be able to assess the expert's expertise. Of the argument, that will allow us to move through and discuss these localized factors you've mentioned that exacerbate or help facilitate the mass killings, and perhaps then we can move to examples of treatment of Vietnamese to illustrate that. So briefly, what was the blueprint? This high modernist, simplistic plan, goal, program that the Communist Party of Cambodia had to offer. Just in the. I think you need to turn on your microphone. Look, now, just now, some bug microphone, the blue. Yeah. So there are different levels of ideology. So some may be very complex for higher-ranking cadres. So I should just note that. But in terms of appealing to the masses, again, very succinctly, I think that the. Uh, leaders drew upon existing structural divisions, focusing in particular upon, for example, land, wealth differences, and they work this into notions of oppression, class oppression, and a class grudge. Uh, and they urge people to struggle uh, with the promise of a better future. And this uh, blueprint or, or program, simplistic program you talk about, um, was it more attractive to a certain type of Cambodian? In your book, you talk about the fact that it seemed to appeal more to the young and also to the extremely poor. Is that correct and, and, and why?
Yes, that that is correct. Um, for the most part, in terms of the poor, uh, as I mentioned before, in terms of socioeconomic structural divisions in society, they were the ones who experienced poverty, uh, debt, landlessness, uh, and to them a message that offers hope. Uh, for moving away from that to achieving some sort of social justice uh, and the promise of a new society in which everyone would prosper, but also, in some sense, they would rise up in terms of their status. And that was very appealing, and for the young as well, uh, who often at young ages in many different societies gravitate towards ideologies and uh, sort of the certainty that we all seek. Um, if I go back to the notion of sort of existential satisfaction, meaning, uh, the control we need over our environments. And when that's torn asunder, people, again, are even more inclined to gravitate towards these messages that provide meaning and certainty in their way. Thank you. And now I'm going to move to another factor, which you say uh, can contribute to mass killings. Uh, and that's one where I, a target group was identified. And perhaps to give this discussion some focus, I'll refer you to E3 slash 3346, your book, at page 33, state Genocidal regimes construct essentialized categories of identity and belonging, a process I refer to as manufacturing difference. Difference is manufactured as genocidal regimes construct, essentialize and propagate socio-political categories of difference. Crystallizing what are normally more fluid forms of identity, crystallization of difference, stigmatizing victim groups in accordance with the differences that are being crystallized, the marking of difference, and then an initiation of a series of institutional, legal, social, and political changes that transform the conditions under which the targeted victim group lived, the organization of difference. And perhaps I'll leave it there. Professor, is that in, in terms of um, identifying target groups? Oui, Monsieur le Procureur, est-ce que vous pourriez faire des questions J'ai peur que sinon nous perdions beaucoup d'interprétations, quand vous citez des passages de livres. I, I will do so, Your Honours. I, I just wanted to put um, these questions in context, but I will do that. Professor, based on your narrative studies, is identifying target groups in, in countries where mass violence is that a key factor to contributing to uh, killings? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, now, now, I'm not going to ask you whether or not uh, that existed in democratic countries. Right I will ask you is in short form, what does the crystallization of difference mean in terms of that manufacturing of difference process? Uh, the crystallization of difference is, refers to the fact that we live in a world in which we all encounter difference 
Jum various types of divisions, types of divisions between us and them, and there are many of them. At certain times, especially historic times of tumult, uh, if a group, for example, was blamed, uh, as occurred, for example, in the United States with Muslims and Arab Americans, where people were aware of the differences with these groups, suddenly, in a context and with an ideology, it becomes sharpened, and so what were once sort of fluid differences and understanding of those become much more focused upon. Uh, I think at different historical periods in Cambodia, attacks on Vietnamese, ethnic Vietnamese have been linked to political context of upheaval even before and after the DK period, as an example in the political context. นอร์เวย์เป็นปัญหาในการล้างเงินทุนในสมองคนโลกศาสตราจารย์ what is that process? What does that ta dam na ka ni dam na ka doi ro biep na dai vi chien to oi mien ka prap prap pe bae so very briefly it's linked to the differences began to be crystallized uh different traits values described to the different groups in question uh, and you began a process uh, and linked to genocide and mass violence by which uh, people began to be dehumanized uh, in different sorts of ways as having negative traits uh, and that became incorporated uh, into this process uh, thank you and then if we look at the third part of this process, manufacturing difference, you refer to it. What does the organization of difference mean? What does that process, the sub-process, entail? Yes, it does. Uh, so often as part of the marking of difference, for example, uh, the group that's being stigmatized is marked as contaminating and impurity a threat, uh, and the uh, regime in question will undertake a series of organizational structural changes, uh, which can, for example, lead to confining people in certain sorts of places to regulate them, uh, for example, maybe keeping a ledger where you list former occupations uh, of different people, uh, and so you exact a regime of control over them. And once this is done, I mean, another example historically would be the Nazi racial courts that would make determinations about whether someone was a Jew or not. Um, but when this process, it's a form of regulation and control that makes the likelihood of genocide and mass violence more likely. Your Honours, um, I was about to ask some questions about whether or not that process exists in the democratic country. Your Honours, I was about to ask some questions about whether or not that process exists in the democratic country. ไทยตรังให้อนุกรรมสมรักจับปีนี้ <coughs> นบกบอนองควรก็ตลอดจรวมสัมนาการในขนมปุตุปสัมนาการในวิ่งในรัสเซียนี้อาบานมุ่นมองบุยกันละสมราชกสมเจียงครักชอ